大家好，我是 All French Style。So we all know what kind of was an unhealthy lifestyle. We accept the fact that we won't be in the best shape of our lives. We'll indulge a bit, and we're okay with that future, whatever that comes. But what if that lifestyle of yours actually doesn't just affect your future, but your unborn children's future? Or even your unborn children's unborn children's future. In this video, I'll share with you some of the latest articles and studies on this newest science called epigenetics, and how it will relate to you and your next generation and the one after that. So, what exactly is epigenetics? Well, just to bring it down to lay terms so that everyone understands, because、uh, it can get very technical. It's basically modifications to your genes that can either switch the genes on or off, without actually changing the genes themselves. So to help you guys understand what epigenetics is all about, I'm going to share with you two studies, observational studies done in the past, and clinical trials done on mice. So story time. We're going to talk about the first one, Dutch Hunger Winter. So during World War II, Nazi Germany had occupied the Netherlands, and the west side of it was completely blocked off, and so a lot of food could not get in, and there was a really bitter cold. So a lot of people died. About twenty thousand people died. And they actually had to revert to eating grass and tulip bulbs, as well as burn all the furniture that they can find just to survive. It was a very unfortunate situation for the Dutch. However, they were able to keep such high standards of records that epidemiologists later had a great、uh, effort and opportunity to get a lot of insights from that period. So they were able to form two groups in this study: the one that were really malnutritioned pregnant women during conception, as well as the first trimester, they did not have enough food. And then the second group, where they had enough food in the beginning, but during the final trimester and giving birth, the delivery, they did not have enough food. So the results of the study was very interesting and very surprising. The first group of women, the pregnant women,、uh, they did not have enough food in the first trimester or conception, but then they caught up on food. The birth weight of the babies were actually normal, and this kind of makes sense because they did kind of catch up on body weight as well. So that's why they did not have any. Uh, big sizable differences when they were born. However, when they followed these、uh, offspring, and they, the studies were decades long, so they were able to track even the offspring's、uh, into adulthood, that they actually had higher rates of cardiovascular disease and morbidity. The second group of pregnant women who did not have enough food during、uh, the final trimester gave birth to babies that had lower birth weight, so the babies were. Smaller and were lighter, and even though they grew up with as much food as they wanted to eat, they never caught up on size. They remained、uh, relatively small in frame. So this was a very interesting study, also because these observations、uh, were also observed in their children. So th these are the grandchildren of the pregnant women during the Dutch hunger winter. The grandchildren also showed the same types of observations as the offspring. In another observational study that was made in the late 1800s, early 1900s, in Urvikalix, Sweden,、uh, they actually had at times when they had a lot of surplus of food, but also、uh, not a lot of food. And so they studied the the Swedish men living there, and during their their slow growth period (SGP), which is basically a very specific period right before puberty. And so when the men were not well fed during their SGP. Their offspring, their sons, actually showed、uh, lower risk of cardiovascular disease and high cholesterol, blood pressure, etc. However, if the father had high intake of food during his SGP, not only did his son but also his grandsons also had higher rates of obesity and diabetic illnesses. Okay, so fast forward to 2010, clinical trials of mice. They actually overfed male mice just to see. Uh, what their offspring would be like, and sure enough, their offspring actually had normal weight, but had symptoms of type two diabetes and other obesity-related illnesses. In another study in 2010, they overfed male mice once again, who mated、uh, female mice with with a normal diet, and then their offspring. They checked their livers. They actually took samples from their livers to check their DNA of the liver of the offspring, and they actually found、uh, modifications to the genes. In the liver, which is what is responsible for metabolism, it's it's in the liver, and they did find that there are some abnormalities in the genes of the liver of the offspring mice. So that's it, guys. In conclusion,、uh, the science is still very new, and there are studies that are constantly coming out about epigenetics. But keep in mind that 
the actions and behaviors that you're making day to day, i.e. your lifestyle, may not only just affect your future, but also the future of your unborn children and the future of their unborn children. I hope you found that useful. And as always, please leave any questions or comments below and I'll see you next time.